In an era when college basketball seems more of an industry than a sport, Cooper Union College is a breath of fresh air, a place where players really are scholars and where everyone's in it for the love of the game. Here, we come to school to learn. We don't come to school for basketball. This is Real Sports. And now from HBO Studios, your host, Brian Gumbel. You know, amid all the hype of March Madness we hear, we read a lot these days about Cinderella dreams and school spirit. But the fact is, most of those teams still playing are run more like NBA franchises than college outfits. Yet, believe it or not, there are still some places where the collegiate ideal is very intact. Places where members of the school basketball team regularly attend classes and still carry demanding academic workloads. Our Derek McGinty has a look at one such remarkable outpost, the tiny college of Cooper Union. One, two, three. Cooper! Meet the captain of Cooper Union's basketball team, Stephen Demetropoulos. His average this season is 3.9. And this is junior center Milo Daka, who's also averaging 3.9. The team's top three-point shooter, Rami Saeed, he's averaging four this year. But we're not talking points per game here. We're talking grade point averages at the nation's third most selective college after Princeton and Harvard. These aren't just some of America's smartest student athletes, they're some of the smartest students, period. You guys don't look like nerds. You take that back. <laughs> We're not nerds. Okay. We know how to have fun. The college was founded in 1859 in the heart of Manhattan's East Village by industrialist Peter Cooper as a mecca for gifted students of art, architecture, and engineering. Cooper mandated that all applicants who met admission standards would attend free of charge. The Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art. Where do I get paid for this? Academics have always been the be-all and end-all at Cooper. Thomas Edison was an alumnus, and groundbreaking inventions like the microchip were developed there. As for pursuits as trivial as basketball, well, the college dropped the program in 1961, and it wasn't brought back until 1992, when a group of students asked Dean Steve Baker to be their coach. So these kids wanted a team. Of course. But I wouldn't have done it unless I had one kid who was six foot five. <laughs> <laughs> a native New Yorker whose grandfather put down the original field at Yankee Stadium, Dean Baker has been a fixture at Cooper since 1966. On your card it says, no gym, no courts, no fields, no time, no excuses. And no money. <laughs> I want a dime in my budget. Right. Okay. No dime, so we're raising money. Tell me a little bit about what kind of resources you have. My budget is $32,000. That $32,000 isn't just for basketball. It's for Cooper's entire athletic program, which includes soccer, baseball, softball, volleyball, and tennis teams. How can you run a, a program on so little money? If you don't have anything, you make it do. For Dean Baker, keeping the program afloat often means waking at 3 a.m. and driving two hours from his family home in Connecticut. With respect to basketball, you have to bring a 35-second class. Come on, Lloyd. Nice to see you. It really is an honor for me every single day. And I will make you have a bad day at Cooper Union. I've never had a bad minute. I've never had a bad time. never had a bad second at Cooper Union. See, I'll hit you. I'll hit, I'll hit you if someone left you bank for a right. How do you recruit? Recruit? Peter Cooper wouldn't let us recruit at all. We're trying to recruit the greatest scholars in the world. They come to the school, and if they can play, they play. One, two, three, Cooper! And as if no money and no recruiting weren't obstacles enough, Cooper Union's players actually go to class. A lot. Most study 60 to 80 hours a week, leaving little time for practice, something senior point guard Stephen Demetropoulos has learned to live with. I'm struck by the fact that you guys only practice once a week. Yeah. How does that work? It's hard because we don't have a gym. We don't have a budget for a gym. So we practice at a junior high school. And that's only available to us once or twice a week. However, I think we've done okay practicing one, one time a week. <laughs> nice going, nice going, nice going. Practicing just once a week and playing in rented school gyms doesn't seem to bother the 15 Cooper players probably because 12 of them never even played high school ball. That's a great position for the rebound. Why? Long shot, long rebound. In Rami Saeed's case, it was because he was just too fat. I was about uh, 225 pounds when I first saw Dean Baker. 
at an orientation. And uh, I inquired about basketball, and he said, what are you doing now you know, to get in shape for the next season? I don't see him until September. He comes back from orientation. I knew he had lost 60 pounds. Wow. So I knew the kid was, had the right work ethic, had a tremendous heart, and never has anybody worked as hard. And I don't think there's anybody as smart as him on the basketball court. Or in the classroom. Saeed has a 4.0 GPA in chemical engineering, which is why MD, PhD programs at MIT, Berkeley, and other top schools are offering him scholarships. Every time when your academics became in conflict with your basketball, we've had weekend games on Saturday and Sunday, and you have a presentation on Monday. I mean, you have to make the time for all of it. And we don't sacrifice playing basketball. We sacrifice maybe going out with our friends. Sometimes we sacrifice sleep. <laughs> You can anticipate that pass, go for it. Somebody, some, the other wing is going to back you up. These are kids who aren't used to playing sports. Don't you have to break through something to get the mentality in the right place? The nerves control the world. And so everything they do, they're very competitive, they're very successful. We put them on a basketball court, and they really pick up on the athletics. And the majority of athletics is from the shoulders up. Remember in your heads right now, we're switching Bonnie's 14 to 99. I call out Bonnie's 14, you got that? Bonnie's 14, it's 99. If I call out 99, it's Bonnie's 14. Playing against colleges like Bard, which have more money and more practice time, the little school with the even smaller athletic budget plays smart, unselfish ball, somehow managing to win and win and win. That's it! The Pioneers were 15-2 and two this year and have won 75% of their games in the last five years against NCAA Division III competition, even though they have no home court. One key part of that success has been sophomore forward Jess Stamen. Wait, oh, Jess! Oh, by the way, Jess is a woman. You've actually got a woman on your men's basketball team. She's a great player, but what a great person. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. She's a 3-9 index student in the arts world. I was just thinking about the feeling of the reflection of the water. When she first came out, were you skeptical at all? Not at all. I saw what she could do. Uh, I saw the smile on her face. And the first time I, I talked to her up at orientation camp, I knew that I, she was a very special person. Were they accepting of you from the beginning? Very much. Very you have to say this just No, no, but it's the beginning. <laughs> You can tell the truth. It's the truth. They've been supportive and encouraging from the get-go, and I think that's one of the things that speaks very highly about the character of this team. For Cooper Union, halftime ceremonies are a little different, too. It is Stephen Demetropoulos night. In his final game for the Pioneers, Stephen Demetropoulos was recognized more for his work off the court than on it. This is not a Cooper nerd, this is a very special person. Demetropolis wasn't the only star on this night. The team, which carries a 3.5 GPA overall, was also honored by Cooper President George Campbell. The entire cadre of scholar-athletes at Cooper Union have brought such honor to the institution, and I'm going to declare April 19th Scholar-Athlete Day. Put being a scholar athlete in context here at Cooper Union, when you think about what it must mean at some big time program like a Duke or UNC, we come to school to learn. We don't come to school to play basketball. Um, for all of us, we know we're not going to continue uh, in professional leagues playing basketball. So for us to excel, we need to excel in the classroom, uh, which is going to get us jobs in the future. How much does Dean Baker have to do with that chemistry? A lot. He's a father figure to us. He's not only my best friend, but he's like, he's going to be one of my best friends for life. You want to take him off for a shot? We graduate in May, so I'm thinking about taking him about two or three days later. He's always asking us how we're doing in school. He's always trying to gel the team together. Um, and he does that more than I can see a lot of people doing. He cares a lot. And for one more time, let's be proud of Steven again. Let's take him off. Okay. Sounds like you love these kids. I think it's beyond that. I mean, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's very hard to describe, but it, it's, it's a feeling of doing something together. It's a feeling of being involved in an environment of excellence that you're sharing with extremely bright people, whether it's on a basketball court or off the basketball court. 
It's just the greatest thing in the world. But hey, one big hand for Dean Vega. Dean Vega is so much fun for us at all. Thank you. One, one, one more time. One, two, three, big. Yeah. Well, get out of here. Three. Get out of here. D-Mac, is, is Jess Stamen the only woman playing men's basketball in the NCAA? You know, I, I, I got to think that she most likely is, but she's a pretty good player, and Dean Baker says, hey, she wouldn't be on the team if she couldn't play. This is an affirmative action. <laughs> what does Dean Baker even cite as the reason why Cooper Union bothers? I mean, why bother with athletics? I'll grant you their, their budget is only 32 grand, but why even spend the 32 grand? Because these young people want to play ball, and he thinks that a couple things. A, all the competitive design that goes into getting into the third most competitive school in the country does well when you focus it into basketball and soccer and the other things they play. And the other thing is, it's good for them as young people to have what's just like it's good for everybody. Yeah, they're 15 and 2, you yeah. told me, right? Yeah. Boy, well, play it. They play in other small technical type schools, you know, Division three schools. They don't have, some of them have more money and practice more than this school does. I would hope that practice more. They can't practice less. <laughs> I mean, these guys only practice once a week. Once a week. They can't practice they, they, less. They are amazingly good. I went to one of the games and they play very well for a team that only practices once a week. They're pretty darn good. What do they think of big time programs? Do they envy them or do they think they're kind of weird? Again, I don't think they think about them at all. You know, I think they are, they, they are very happy doing what they do and they're such different animals from a UNC or a Georgetown, that it almost defies comparison. Yeah. Um, do I even bother to ask for the graduation radius, 100%? Don't bother. <laughs> 100%. Gather that. All right, D-Mac, thanks very much. Thank you, Brian.